Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and it looks like we have some more Old World news. This is the second time this year which makes me think that we're going to get this every month and again makes me think that we're going to get a lot of big news when it comes to Warhammer Fest. Okay, so... Tomb King news. This is going to be quite interesting. I swear, if we're going to get monthly development diaries, I'm just going to be so happy. Let's start reading over this, right? Rob, the design manager for Warhammer The Old World, and writers Jonathan and Dan reveal some of the macabre details of the lands of the deads and its tyrannical monarch. Ooh. After the excitement of the previous Old World development diary, it's fair to say that fans of The Old World have been champing at the bit for more. What have you got for us this time? In our previous article, we looked at the very heart of the Old World, the Empire of Man. What we found out was a realm both familiar to fans of Warhammer, but also subtly different, not the unified nation you might remember from Warhammer Fantasy Battle. God, I love when they say Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Anyways, yeah, so very basic. We've got some artwork here, and this is both a uh, Skeletal Warrior and a Tomb Guard, the Tomb Guard first. This is clearly box art. Like, it looks so much like box art. I honestly it makes me think that they're just getting done with this maybe the rumors of the bretonians and tomb king boxes will be true either way i'm all for it it's the classic color scheme it's how i've actually got my bretonians painted up i'll be showcasing them on the channel very very soon so this is actually really really cool this time, we're going to take a look at something that will be extremely familiar to the longtime fans, the Land of the Dead and the tyrannical rule of Setra, the imperishable, the undying king of Khemri. The supreme monarch of Nehakara and the other tomb kings are going to be major players in the stories we will tell in Warhammer the Old World, and it has been wonderful to come back to them after all these years. They're not technically denizens of the Old World, but the invasions play a key part in the narrative at this time during the history of the setting. Yeah, they've got a few things when they go directly for Norska, and we know that Chaos is going to be uh, invading everywhere. It's just how it goes with these uh, big moves of an ever chosen. So it's going to likely have a lot of ramifications because they're going to be looting Tomb Kings, right? They're going to be looting pyramids, and that's going to piss off the Tomb Kings. We've got the first bit of artwork here, and this is actually really, really amazing. So, uh, we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Tomb King pyramids. Right, these are like named areas like Nomaz, Khemri, Zandri. This is going to be very, very, very curious. Also, Zandri is a bit down south, isn't it? She's usually a bit closer to the shoreline. And we can see different iconography for all of them, which is going to mean very likely we're going to have a little bit of different factions coming up. There's definitely going to have to be a follow-up video regarding all these different icons, as, uh, yeah, some of them are quite interesting and will likely be playable factions in the future. I'm going to be very, very happy if this means that we might get uh, King Far of Numus, but I could already say it's very likely that we'll love it. Well, we're seeing Cetra for obvious reasons. Uh, it looks like Kalida is coming in, which is cool because her actual uh, pyramid's there too. And for Zandri, uh, to Manhattan, maybe? Maybe? Anyways, let's move on. Warhammer community. Uh, Cetra has been a prominent character in Warhammer for a long time now, but what interest does he have in the lands of the living and the people of the old world? Jonathan, in life, Cetra expanded the borders of Nehekara until his realm stretched far beyond the horizon eastwards and westwards. His legions marched across the deserts and mountains until they reached distant coasts, and to the north his dominion included the lands now known as the Empire and Bretonia. In the years that followed his death, lesser monarchs lacked the will and ambition to maintain such a massive kingdom, and over the centuries it shrank to a shadow of its former glory. Okay, so we knew more or less about the East stuff, and I was more or less aware that they had taken over the Empire. We didn't know too much about Bretonia, but obviously it's very close. Hopefully they'll actually, in the army book, give us a what they used to have before Cetra died type of thing, like a little map with just, you know, coloured in Cetra's colours. 
There's a bit of a close-up there, but nothing too new. But there's definitely going to be Fallout videos, don't you worry. Uh, we've got a little bit more information here, which is when Cetra awoke from death following the great necromancer's diabolical rule, his wrath was unmatched. Not only had the Lich Priest failed to return him to an eternally youthful body, but his dynasty had crumbled to a insignificance in his absence. Interesting, I love that term there. Uh, since that day, Cetra had been plotting the reconquest of the lands that were once his and the subjugation of the usurper kings, queens and emperors who dared to rule in his stead. No doubt we will see these plans of conquest set in motion when the time is right. Okay, so this means that the Tomb Kings are actually going to be fairly aggressive in the story. Uh, I'm actually quite happy about these. I'm, I'm actually really, really happy about this because um, they didn't really do too much in the old story in Warhammer Fantasy, so this is going to be cool. So we got some questions here. Can you give us any clues about how a Tomb King army will wage war upon the denizens of the Old World? So Dan says, we've taken a great deal of care to make the undead work. It was vital that the rules presented balanced game mechanics while evoking the frightening image of rank upon rank of skeletal warriors marching in unison. Okay, so rules are pretty much done. As chariots speed towards the enemy flanking by monstrous constructs uh, animated by the ancient magic of the mortuary cults, you will be able to wield powers of lich priests once more commanding skeletal hordes to arise from their tombs and march upon the lands of the living. Oh god, yeah, okay. So everything seems that they're just hinting it's going to be very similar to the 8th edition army book which is fair which is honestly very very fair um, maybe they'll just get rid of the issue with the hero font rule because honestly that was the only big issue with tomb kings back in the day if they get rid of that or they find a way to supplement it like you can have another character become the hero font then you're pretty much golden okay so we have some artwork here oh, yeah this is definitely going to be some more uh, box art it's going to be great to see them because it looks like they're the same ones that we already had uh, for the Sepulchre Stalkers and so on. Um, I'm looking at the models right now, right behind me. Yeah, it's definitely the same and that's great because the models were actually quite good. Uh, the models were actually very, very good. So I'm, I'm actually very happy because I do actually need a few more. <laughs> And finally, we have uh, just a few questions. So, with Cetra's attention seemingly fixed upon foreign affairs, will we get much of a chance to explore the lands of the dead itself? Our main focus is going to be the, on the role that Cetra and the Tomb Kings of Khemri played in the Old World. But there's nothing to stop us returning to Nehakara in the future. There are plenty of instances of Tomb Kings waging war on one another while Cetra's attention was elsewhere. And that's before we even get started on the raiders and invaders from far off lands. Many have scoured the blistering deserts of Nehakara in search of ancient treasures, some hoping to stumble upon wealth beyond imagination, while others sought long-forgotten secrets or legendary artifacts worth far more than gold. Okay, so this is actually a very, very big thing. So, this means that the main focus of Warhammer the Old World is going to be the Old World, surprise, surprise, but eventually they will spread out to other locations. It's easy to hypothesize that right now, Cetra is going to be pushing up into, say, for example, the Badlands, and then into the Border Prince territories, because he controlled all those regions. Uh, this kind of does point out that we might get a little bit of a Bretonia versus Tomb Kings box, as the rumor said, as this uh, means that, you know, he'll want to go up that way to take it. He could easily move in by sea, taking control of the navies of Xandri. But I like the idea that, yes, there is a chance that we will see stuff centered in the Tomb King lands of Nehekara. And that obviously opens it up for the future when it comes to stuff like, you know, uh, going to Lustria, going to Ind, going to Nippon. Um, right now we do have Cafe and that's very far off from the Old World. So it can be assumed that it's not going to be just in the Old World. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see. This is all really, really exciting. I've got to start like looking at my Tomb King books. I've really got to start looking at my Tomb King books. But with all that being said, what do you guys think? This must be really exciting because finally another faction confirmed and a big one at that. Um, <laughs> let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a little bit of a discussion.